Women are underconfident in their financial knowledge. According to research performed by Fidelity Investments, only 9% of women think they make better investors than men. That's less than one in 10. But in reality, women earn higher returns on average. In fact, overall, women are better savers and more rational investors. However, more women than ever before are starting to invest. The 2021 Women and Investing Study showed that 67% of surveyed women are now investing outside of their retirement account accounts as compared to 44% in 2018. But the problem still remains. There is a gender gap in financial literacy. In this video, we explore the causes of the gender gap, its implications, and what we can do to address it. If you find today's video informative, you can help spread awareness by leaving a like for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new around here and are looking to improve your financial literacy, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Women have a greater need to be financially literate than men. Based on OECD data, there are less women in the workforce than men. Of those in the workforce, force, more women are in part-time employment, and among full-time employees, women earn less on average by about 15%. Fidelity's Global Women and Money Study puts the gender pay gap at 23%. Not only do women have less financial resources than men, but they also live longer, meaning they require more money than men in retirement. In fact, in the UK, women have a longer lifespan by about four years, but yet have 51% less than men in retirement savings. Savings. In Germany, this figure is 64%. The Economic and Social Research Institute found that the average pension income of retired women in Ireland is 35% lower than men. This gap is largely caused by differences in occupational status between men and women over the course of their lives. The bottom line, women need to be financially literate in order to take the necessary steps to manage the greater financial risks they face. In the research paper, Women, Confidence and financial literacy, the key finding by Anna Maria Lusardi and her fellow researchers was that when it comes to financial literacy, women know less than men, but they know more than they think they know. They propose that the gender gap in financial literacy is not only driven by lower knowledge, but also by lower confidence. Fidelity's research confirms this, with only 14% of women saying they know a lot about saving and investing, and just one third feel confident in their ability to make investment decisions. Lusardi found found that in two sets of surveys assessing financial literacy, when the don't know option is removed from the answer pool, the gender gap in correct answers between men and women shrinks significantly. It was also found that women were significantly less confident in their answers even when they were correct. What's interesting is that while women provided more incorrect answers, they were also much more likely to select the don't know option even when they knew the answer. The point was made that bodies responsible for financial education need to discern between low knowledge and low confidence when designing new initiatives for financial literacy. A priority needs to be instilling women with confidence in their financial selves. To date, governments, public bodies, and financial institutions have failed to connect with specifically the younger generation on the topic of financial literacy. The European Commission and the OECD recently published the Financial Competence Frame work for adults in the European Union. EU Commissioner for Financial Services Mairead McGuinness sees national governments using the framework to help develop new financial education policies and programs. She also mentioned that the equivalent framework for children and young people will be published in 2023. Whether this framework will assist in the creation of value-adding content which resonates with young people remains to be seen, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Like all matters relating to personal finance, the solution here isn't black and white. Lusardi's research found that single individuals and those with higher incomes showed better financial knowledge, whereas single parents displayed lower levels of financial literacy. Thus, initiatives for financial literacy need to be designed with varying demographics in mind. The innate differences between men and women also need to be considered. Lusardi's research and research performed elsewhere suggest that men are overconfident investors. The paper Boys Will Be Boys, Gender, Overconfidence and Common Stock Investment by Barbara and Odeon found that men trade 45% more than women. This data was collected between 1991 and 1997, but still holds true today, as recent analysis by Vanguard found that women traded 40% less frequently than men. We know that frequent trading results in lower investment returns, which may partly explain why women on average are better investors. Overconfidence 
confident investing in men has also been linked to higher cortisol and testosterone levels. Reshma Soujani in her TED talk says that women have been socialized to aspire to perfection and are overly cautious. She notes that young girls are taught to avoid risk and failure. Investing in the stock market is of course not without risk and there are no guarantees or certainties available to investors. Speaking to the New York Times on this issue, Money Zen founder Manisha Thakur believes that men are more comfortable making decisions without knowing everything. This overconfidence may explain why men tend to have greater financial literacy than women. Not because they're better investors, but because they're more likely to take the leap of faith and gain practical experience. Barbara and Odeon note that differences in confidence are greatest for tasks perceived to be in the masculine domain, with financial matters being perceived to exist in that domain. Lusardi notes that even among financial experts, women show lower self-confidence in financial analysis as compared to men. Therefore, a big part of the problem is this dated societal ideology of men being more financially capable than women. It's utter nonsense. So where do we go from here? Understanding the problem is the starting point. The reality is that closing the gender gap in financial literacy won't fully eliminate inequalities in retirement provisions or personal investment accounts. As Lusardi puts it, insufficient income is the genesis of poverty and gaps in basic financial knowledge compound the issue. So long as men and women continue to differ in the length of time in which they're in the workforce and the nature of that work, there will always be a sizable difference in their financial health. The ESRI found that 93% of retired men had worked for more than 30 years, compared to 33% of retired women. More time in the workforce means more income earned and more money contributed to pension schemes. But by instilling confidence and improving our financial education initiatives, we can close the gender gap and maximize individual potential. Normalizing conversations in your social circles about personal finance is the best way to start improving financial literacy. It's critical that we're promoting the importance of financial literacy across all genders. The Global Women and Money Report highlighted how women were disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. It was found that in every surveyed market, more women's savings were impacted adversely than men's in the past 12 months. By leveling the playing field in financial literacy, we can ensure that both men and women are equipped with the tools necessary for coping with future financial shocks. I want to highlight two companies I found who are doing great work tackling the issue of financial literacy among women. This video isn't sponsored by any of these companies, I just felt they could be helpful resources for any women who want to connect with like-minded female investors. The first company is Female Invest and their mission is to close the financial gender gap. They offer e-learning videos, webinars, master classes and private community groups all dedicated to the vision of empowering women with control over their financial futures. The other company is Clever Girl Finance who are helping women to achieve financial freedom. They offer a suite of free courses and articles covering an array of personal finance topics. For any of my female viewers, let me know your thoughts on the gender gap in financial literacy. Do you feel confident in your financial knowledge? And if not, what would you like to see changed? Equally, do you disagree with any of the research findings that were mentioned in this video based on your own experiences? Let me know. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.